Hi, I'm Jakir King, and I've been making records professionally for more than 30 years. I've had a fantastic journey and worked with many amazing artists along the way. I've got some tips and tricks I'd like to share with you from behind the scenes of the record making process. Let's talk about setting up monitors in your studio environment, your listening space. Some things to keep in mind are you want to have a comfortable environment to listen in and you want to put yourself at a place in the room where you have the most uniform shape to the space. For instance, you don't want to have glass on your right side and a wall, drywall on your left if it can be avoided. If you are in a situation like that, you, you might need to put the same curtain on the wall that you do over the glass of the window. Just try to keep it uniform in terms of, of reflection. Like if there's a closet on one side, well that's going to do some low end trapping. That might be a good thing, but just be aware that you want to try to have something as balanced as possible. Preferably you want to do your low frequency um, absorption to the back of the room. A couch is a great way to start for low frequency trapping and absorption. It also provides a great way for people to come and join you and listen to the work that you're doing. Some other things to keep in mind are you don't want to be set up in the middle of the space because then you having you have all the reflections coming back basically at the same time. You want to be at one end of the space and that way you know you are not listening in the very center of the room. You will get a little bit of low end reinforcement coming from the wall or what's behind the speakers. So you you do want a little bit of that because speakers are designed to have a little bit of reinforcement of the acoustic space. Um, you know, if you just take you know, the thought of a, a PA system that's out more in an open space, they need a lot more subwoofers to kind of help create that building up of sound and that reinforcement of sound. But in a studio space, you kind of want to be to one end of the room, one end of the space. You don't want to be too close because if you get too close, then you get too much buildup and you don't want that either. So it's like finding that balance. Sometimes these things are dictated just by how you can manage to fit yourself in the space. So you want to be to one end and then you know try to organize it so that it's comfortable and then you basically want to establish a, a listening triangle. You want the distance between them to be a little bit less than the distance you are from them. It's not exactly an isosceles triangle but that's a that's a, at least a good visual reference. You want the tweeters and the woofers, the, the, the space in between, to sort of be at ear level. You want to try to get an equal amount of both. You don't want the speakers too low so you're, on, you're primarily hearing just the tweeters and you don't want them too high so you're primarily hearing the woofers. Finding that sweet spot is really important. If you're going to err to one side it would be, I think, to have in my personal opinion, I think it would be to have your ears a little bit more towards the tweeters. That low, you don't want all that low frequency masking. If you're down real low and you're getting a lot of, of the woofer, um, it's going to mask the high frequencies and you probably overdo the brightness. I would suggest as you set the room up that you don't have furniture in front of you. The, the way to start is to just place the speakers on some stands if you can um, and just sort of figure out what the rough it in, figure out what the distance from the wall and, and the distance to in between them based on how close you think you're going to sit to them, get that roughed in and then sort of maybe even mark on the floor with tape where that is, put the furniture in place and try to put the furniture in place so that it, you, you can then arrange the speakers to be pretty much where you rough them in and then we're going to get into the fine tuning part. Now KRK has an app that you can use on your phone that will help you um, finalize and, and check some of this setup stuff. The app does two things. Um, if you have a multiple speaker setup, it, it has a feature where it will allow you to get the volume of the different speakers to be at the same level or very similar so that as you're switching between multiple sets of speakers, your volume's not changing a lot and then you can kind of stay consistent. Um, so it has like a decibel measurement tool in there. Another feature of the app is that it will allow you to 
and you do it in a figure eight pattern in this in your listen like where my head would be you kind of move the phone around in a figure eight pattern and it it basically is listening to um, pink noise which is full frequency uh, spectrum uh, of sound and allows uh, allows the app to analyze the listening sweet spot and it will make suggestions about how you should EQ the speaker. So my Rocket 5s have a volume adjustment. So for the first application I described, you can adjust the volume of the speakers to match another set of speakers. Um, and then the, in the second application, it also has an EQ. So it will the app will suggest some EQ settings. Now they are just a suggestion, but you know sometimes you might need to depending on where you've had to end up setting up your speakers, you might be a little too close to the wall, just, just fractionally. So it might suggest you roll a little bit of the low end off. Or your room is really dead and, and, and not much reflective energy in the space, so you might want to turn the high frequencies up a little bit. Now it's simply a suggestion, and it's a good place to start. So you use the app to sort of establish a good operating level volume as compared to other speakers. Um, it'll also help you It'll also help you if you do them one at a time from the same listening position. You can, like on my monitoring, I can mute either speaker independently. So I could measure my left speaker and then measure my right speaker and make sure that they're at the same volume relatively. The app will also help you do some EQ settings. Um, you know, in this space, I have a lot of uh, absorption. It's not a completely dead space. It's balanced. So, you know, there's... There's absorption in front of me, so I'm not getting a bunch of reflections off the wall. And then on the sides of the wall, basically where the sound would go out, hit the, hit the wall, and then kind of come back to my ears, I also have some uh, absorption. And then as you get further back in the room, it's a little bit more reflective. And then in the very back of the space is a diffuser that it doesn't absorb sound, but it scatters the sound. And then the couch back there and the bass trap diffusion in the corners sort of not only do, is there stuff back there that's diffusing the sound, but the low end is being absorbed where it builds up in the back of the space. Um, so I don't, have a bunch of, I don't have a bunch of sound coming directly back to me. Uh, it's kind of balanced and cleaned up, but it sounds real world. It, 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 it is a balanced space. And another key thing, if you can do this, is there's a cloud over my head. Now, cloud, it's the same type of absorptive material that's on the walls, but what it does is it keeps the reflections from the ceiling coming back down on me. And I have this work surface in front of me, so I am going to get some reflection from the speaker off of this coming to me, but, I, but if you're close enough and the speakers are up high enough above it that th those reflections are kind of not, they're not going to be coming right to my ear, they're going to be a little bit lower. But the ceiling can cause a real, real issue uh, with sound coming down and, and it's coming right back down in this area and you can get some uh, frequency nodes, cancellation, you're going to get build up and cancellation room. So. You know, it's important that your sweet spot is as accurate as you can get it because as you move away and move out of the sweet spot, it, the sound's going to change. Now, you can use that to your advantage. I know what it sounds like to sit here and listen and do something uh, to my liking and I feel like it is well represented. Um, but, you know, in a listening environment, I go back and I, I'll sit on the couch and I'll uh, listen there for a while. And I've learned what it sounds like there. I, I've learned what it sounds like when I leave the control room door open and listen in... in um, out in the hallway or in the kitchen, sit in the corner. Um, those are all important things. And they will help you understand how you need to treat and balance your room. If there's a really excessive buildup of low frequencies on the couch, then you know that you need more bass trapping back there. Now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more low-end heavy back there, but it should still sound balanced with what you're doing and hearing up here. So hopefully these things help you in setting up a, a set of speakers or multiple sets of speakers and um, just ideas to consider to get the best possible uh, outcome with your listening environment.